This video might be a little bit controversial because I'm talking about toxic friends because I've had my fair share of unhealthy friendships, even some toxic friendships. So I'm going to tell you how to identify a toxic friend, kind of share some of my experiences. I feel like a lot of you will be able to relate to this and having this information out there, I feel like will make me feel better because it's like I'm using the negative friend situations that I've had and turning it into something positive and hopefully helping you guys. The reason why I'm dedicating a whole video video to this is because you are who you surround yourself with. You don't, you might not even know that you're doing this, but you are mirroring them. You're mimicking their behavior, the way they talk, the way they think, and you're doing this all subconsciously, but they do have that influence over you. This video is mostly going to be talking about close friends, friends that you spend a lot of time with. I'm choking on my spit. Fewer in numbers and higher in quality is always better. I actually used to be guilty of looking at people on Instagram and being like, how does she have so many friends? Like she has a group of friends that she's always going out with. There's just so many people in their Instagram photos and it looks like these girls all get along. They all have so much fun. And I'm like, how is that group so big? I only have a couple close friends that I would ever do that type of stuff with. Everyone is focusing on their own friends. People that have friends that are good for them are not going to be looking at you because they're already fulfilled in their own friendships. So the only people that are ever going to care to see how many friends you have are people that are dissatisfied with their friendships themselves. Also, I just want to clarify, I believe that every toxic friend or the majority, there's like some rare cases, these are not bad people. All of these unhealthy friendships that I'm talking about, I know these people are good people. These are just things to realize, even in relationships, you guys can be such amazing, nice people with so many amazing qualities, but you can literally just be incompatible. And I don't know why that is so hard for so many people to grasp. You can go through a breakup and people are less dramatic and surprised than people going through friendship breakups. It's not rare for two people to grow out of a friendship. And then I'm also going to give you some action steps to do because I was like completely lost when I realized that I was in a really unhealthy friendship. And these are something that would have been really helpful if someone told me to do when trying to stand up for myself and kind of separate myself from them. But unfortunately, I had to figure it out the hard way and it, there was a lot of tears. The first one is unfortunately very common and it is the insecure friend. Some things that they might do might be like calling you by a nickname that you hate, showing someone or sharing on social media a bad photo of you even when you ask them not to do that. They will make, oh, I have had so many friends like this. They will make jokes about you. They will make fun of you. They will be mean, but they will disguise it as humor. And then they will say that you are way too sensitive and that you don't have a sense of humor if you get offended by their mean joke. It is technically emotional manipulation and they're so insecure. They're so unhappy with themselves that they feel like they have to bring you down because they hate seeing you thrive. Maybe I see someone and they make me insecure. I have to snap out of it and be like, I'm not gonna go make her feel bad about thriving. Sometimes I do actually feel like I wanna do that just to make myself feel better. But in the long run, I am not going to feel better. Like the only thing that's going to make me feel better is gaining confidence because insulting someone else is like putting a band-aid over a little bullet wound like it will not help and that leads me to the second one which is kind of similar but a little bit different and that's a competitor this happened to me with one of my friends in school everything every grade every project everything was a competition it was only a competition on one side they were competing against me but I wasn't competing against them they always have to be superior in a way and that is probably because they are insecure deep down and sometimes they will try to undermine your accomplishments they'll basically discredit you which is really disheartening like I feel like a friend should be doing the opposite of that like why even have a friend if they're not going to be happy for you when you succeed and you don't want to see each other succeed this one is so hard to talk about because I feel like these people are genuinely struggling on the inside and they need to have a mindset change. Like you have to give it to yourself first in order to sustain it throughout your life. Gratitude comes before happiness. Happiness does not come before gratitude. These are the pessimistic friends. Like they can never seem to pull themselves out of their own sadness. I actually had a friend like this and I would constantly compliment them. I would constantly lift them up. I would make sure that I give them unique, sincere, genuine compliments 
compliments all the time. I would give them words of encouragement whenever they wanted to do something. I just cracked my knuckle. And they can't accept your help. They use every event in their life as proof to show you that the world hates them. They can't look for the good in any situation. And this is a very draining friend. When you have conversations with them, you just feel drained because you're like, wow, they make me see the world so negatively. This is a very hard friend to deal with though because I'm not saying that you should just abandon your friends when you're hurting. This is a friend that has a very solid pessimistic attitude that is continuous over long periods of time and you've tried to help them multiple times and they haven't taken your help. Like this is like continuously self-destructive behavior that's now rubbing off on you. And I'm going to tell you at the end of this how you can navigate that situation. And this was definitely in high school and a little bit after high school where I just stopped sharing my accomplishments with people. I felt like it would be better for everyone if I just kept my accomplishments to myself, except my family. Like my family was the only one that I could feel comfortable being happy for myself or proud for myself. I just could not tell them to a couple of my friends because they would use that as ammunition against me. They would have secret resentment against me because they're jealous and they're just convincing themselves that they can never feel that happy. When I've actually been through a ton of things that could make me so sad. And I have honestly like been through sad times where I've been pessimistic, but I've always pulled myself out of that because I know deep down and I've worked on this mindset that life is not for suffering. Like life is for growing and learning and experiencing, but there are no favorites and least favorites of life. Everyone is just living and going through highs and lows. The next one is a narcissist friend. <laughs> Some things that a narcissist friend will do is they will cut you off when you're speaking. They will try to actually change the way you act, the way you talk, your thoughts, your opinions. They think that their thoughts are facts. You cannot disagree with them. <laughs> They're always right. Sometimes they even speak for you. You guys kind of only end up doing what they want when you hang out and everything is just kind of about them. When you're telling a story, they flip it back on themselves. Another thing to recognize is they might rarely ask you any questions. They just might be talk, 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 even talking about other people, everything but asking you questions. And it doesn't even have to be like, how are you mentally? Like not like a deep question, but it could just be like, how was your day? Like, how did this go? They also kind of always need to be the center of attention. Like when you're talking in groups they have to talk over people they have to be the loudest everyone has to be listening to what they're saying they always act on their own interests but never yours this one is a bit harder to notice but they could just constantly be testing your loyalty and devotion to them if they're asking you to lie for them or if they're asking you to just do so many favors for them it's like everything is about them they know exactly what to say to make you feel a certain way so that they can manipulate you into doing something that'll benefit them and that also comes in a lot of relationships like romantic relationships too the next one is the friend with a different social battery i've had so many friends that we get along like when we're talking like when we're one-on-one -on -one communicating but when it comes time to like figure out what we want to do when we hang out how long we want to stay out and what type of people we hang around and how we communicate it literally can make a friendship just be incompatible i could literally love this person love everything about them our friendship of communicating and hanging out the ways that we both like to do it are completely different. My social battery is so weird. I cannot communicate digitally. I just feel so alone because I feel like I'm the only 20 year old girl that doesn't like texting and snapchatting their friends all the time. I love hanging out in person. Like I love my friends. I love talking to them. I love hanging out with them. I love spending time with them, but I absolutely hate snapchatting and texting random updates throughout the day. That drains me. When I'm hanging out with you in person, I have such a longer and better social social battery than when I'm texting you or when I'm even FaceTiming you. It just got to a point where I would want to be social and go out and I would like need that and they would need to stay home. And then it was constantly a compromise or we just have different interests. What they find fun and energizing, I found not fun and draining. Then there's a bad influence friend. I had a couple of these. I did. This was late high school. It's because I'm a very non-confrontational, like people pleaser person. I just kind of go with the flow. Like that was what I was. I didn't want to upset anyone. Didn't want anyone to think I wasn't fun or having a good time. These are people that pressure you to do certain things that you don't want to do. Being like, oh, it's just a test. Like I'm just going to cheat. I don't want to cheat. Like I get so much anxiety breaking the rules. It makes me so uncomfortable to my core. I don't like lying. I can't lie. I physically can't lie. Pressuring you to drink or to vape or to, to do anything 
something like that is just so stupid. Like that is not a friend because a friend would know your boundaries and respect them. Also, if these are friends that just don't take care of themselves, their unhealthy habits, since you're going to mirror them subconsciously, are going to leak into your life. If they are constantly gossiping, if they're constantly pessimistic, if they don't get enough sleep, if they eat like crap, if they never want to leave their bed, that will end up affecting you. Also, if they tend to laugh at other people's pain, even if you're in a private setting and you're just talking about it, like that is not a person I want to be around because they could be laughing at my pain behind my back. This next one is so close to me. This is a friend that disrespects your boundaries. There has been a lot of talk about boundaries on the internet recently for good reason. Like I have learned the power of boundaries and how that makes you so much happier when you enforce them and you let them be known. It changes your life. These could be friends that never pay you back. This happened to me when obviously I was making a lot of money for my age. Influencers get paid more than a minimum wage job. People would kind of see that as in like, oh, Sadie can just drive us. Like she can pay for gas. I don't have to pay Sadie back. Like she already has money. Like she doesn't need the money. What? Wait. <laughs> What? I would pay you back because I respect all the work that you put in to earn your money. Friends that are flaky, they will make plans, they will not show up to the plans, don't respect your time, and don't respect your guys' quality time. I love studying for tests five days early, so I'll make a study plan for each day of what lectures and what things I want to get done each day. Also, all the social media stuff and everything and working out and everything. And I really want to stick to that plan. Some friends will just be like, oh, don't study today, like study tomorrow, or just like, oh, you can skip, come on, like you can start late, just stay up late and do it they're not making you grow they're actually making you go a little backwards but i would say like guys i can't hang out i have to stay home and edit a youtube video or like i have to stay home like take instagram photos i know that sounds so dumb and silly but it was important to me and so if it is important to me and i've expressed that you should be respecting that and you should be wanting me to spend time doing those things other examples would be like them overstaying their welcome if they knew that i had to get work done later in the day but then they just like didn't organize a ride or a drive home so i have to drive them home they would call you boring if you didn't stay and hang out i don't know if that's just immaturity but it's just no respect especially when you are respecting things that are important to them these types of people always want a favor from you but they're mia when you need a favor from them this happened to me so much in school when i would spend hours on my notes one person would ask me and be like hey city can you send me your notes and i would be like Yes! It's not like I spend hours perfecting those notes. Let me just send them to you and you can have them in two seconds. That's not respecting your time and energy as well. The last type of friend is the two-faced friend. Whenever I think of two-faced, I think of like the Chrishell fight from Selling Sunset. Girls are especially good at this. But the way that you could realize this is if they act like a completely different person in a public setting versus a private setting. When they say like, not to be mean, but... Or they talk about a mutual friend, then it's like wait maybe they tell you other people's secrets a lot which just makes them untrustworthy or these are friends that only want to be seen with you in front of certain people or only want to be seen with you on like social media toxic friendships actually offer you the opportunity to practice honest direct feedback. These friendships actually push us to have those difficult conversations, which leads us to setting boundaries, which leads us to looking for better friends and growing as a person. So now I'm going to tell you a little detox plan for friends that you noticed have a little bit of a toxic habit or friends that you don't think you're compatible with. Trying these steps that I'm going to tell you and then seeing how your friends react to them. One, when you're simply just telling them at first and then two, long term over the course of how however many weeks or months when you observe their behavior, just observing that will give you much needed information on whether you want to repair this friendship or move on. A lot of people will just turn to focusing on the friend. They'll just be like, she's a crap person because she does this. But instead you can reframe it to focus on what you can control, which is yourself. And you'll be like, I will set these boundaries and enforce them because that's literally the only thing that I can do. These are things that maybe don't do when you're having little problems with friends. Don't tell mutual friends to shut them out or to not include them. I feel like that is kind of like trying to get them back or like getting revenge. One more thing, which I don't think any of you people would do because you're awesome, is don't insult them, don't call them names, don't send them mean texts. It's never worth it and those will always come back to bite you. Step one is just asking for what you need. And when you're doing this, always use I statements. You can say, I feel hurt when you say these comments about my body because they can't really argue that because they can't be like, no, you don't feel that way. And focusing on your 
your feelings makes it more likely and easier for them to see your side and empathize with you. Communication is really enforced and talked about in romantic relationships, but in friendships, it's it's so important. And especially when you're communicating a need that you would like from them, either they're going to react in a good way or a bad way, and then you know if they're a good friend for you or a bad friend for you. So communication will literally never do you wrong. The second step is to take some space. This is so hard for me to do because I am a fixer. Like I want to fix things right away. I just want it to be done. I feel like taking time away helps me clear my head. It also can take you out of a pessimistic attitude and be like, okay, is my friend actually really toxic or did she just make a mistake that was like out of character? We all can behave in ways that we're not proud of. I behave in ways that I'm not proud of. I notice that. Like I am not a perfect friend. Step three is to try forgiving them. Even if you feel like this is your last chance, try forgiving them one more time. At least if you see them making an effort, you know that there's hope. But if you don't see any hope, it'll give you more incentive to start distancing yourself. And part of being a good friend is forgiving your friends and letting things be in the past. But repeated behavior should not constantly be ignored. When someone shows you who they are, believe them. It's not when someone tells you who they are. Like it's literally just their actions. That's concrete proof of who they are. Because if they actually respected you, then they would respect you. It's like that simple. Step four is to make new friends. I maybe suggest trying to make a couple new friends, plant some seeds before you try to distance yourself from the toxic friend because then you'll feel less lonely. You'll feel like you have more hope. You have more exciting things budding in your social life and you don't have to do this. But if you feel like you're going to feel lonely, maybe plant those seeds first and then go about this. And it's just like relationships. You always think that there's never going to be someone out there that's better fit for you, but there always is. Making new friends helps you realize what a good friend is and what a bad friend is. I can't stress this enough, guys. Guys. I just wanted to add this into the video because I want to be looking out for you guys. Your behavior can always come back to bite you. Remember that hurt, insecure, competitive, jealous people are the people that are hurting you. So they already have their own problems. You don't need to beat them down and be like, you did this to me. Like once you express how they hurt you, that's enough. You leaving the friendship is enough. They're already dealing with their struggles, but you don't have to get them back. If you can have a conversation over text where you guys kind of solve what's going on, on, or you just get written proof that you gave them another chance, you expressed to them your feelings, you were kind and calm, you let them know what was important to you and you heard them out, you saw repeated behavior and you called it out, then no one can be like, oh my gosh, she said that you were so mean and you cut her off and blah blah blah, like there's written proof of the mature way that you acted. It's unfortunate that you were the one that had to kickstart the moving on process, but in the end, it will be better for both of you. And I just wanted to affirm to you that separating yourself from a friend, even if you've been friends with them for 20 years, and if it's a toxic friend, that's not something that's mean. If they're jealous or competitive or insecure because of you, then you're not helping them either. So you separating yourself from them is actually going to benefit them in the long run. They might not realize that at the beginning, but it will. And now you can use every single toxic friend that you've ever had and use them as an example of what you don't want in a friend. Recognize that they're not good for you and you're not good for them. People will bring certain characteristics out of you and I think that is actually so cool like I think that's a gorgeous thing that happens but sometimes it's the traits that you're not proud of that they do bring out of you and you're not a perfect friend either and there are things that I want to work on but I just know that I have good intentions and I'm making an effort when someone comes to me and says what you did really hurt me or made me feel this way I will always believe them like always believe your friends when they express something to you number one expressing something that is really uncomfortable to one of your closest friends is so hard them being able to do that means that they value you and they want you to be able to fix this so that you guys can get past this and have a better friendship. So always believe them when they come to you with something. I've also learned that if you learn your friend's love languages, just like you learn your boyfriend or girlfriend's love language, it actually helps you so much. Like a lot of my friends love words of affirmation. Then I try to give them genuine compliments just out of the blue because I know that'll make them feel good. These are just some things that I love that my friends that I have now do. And now I'm just so so grateful for the things that they do. I love, love, 
when people call me out on my crap. They remind me of my own boundaries. Like that is the best thing anyone could ever do for me. It genuinely helps me a lot. And if I surround myself with people who are going to do that, then they're gonna actually help me grow. And that means that they want to see me do well. Another thing is actually doing work when we go to a coffee shop. Sometimes we go to a coffee shop and we do talk a little bit, but when they actually do work and when they want to be productive, I find that so attractive. Even in a boyfriend, I just always wanted someone that I could sit down and actually be productive with. I love friends that act in a way that I admire when they have something that I don't. A lot of my friends, they are more go with the flow. Like they're less overthinky. They don't take everything so personally. I admire that quality in them. And I just love when my friends have those qualities because then I feel like I'm feeding off of them. I love having self-sufficient, independent friends. I recognize that I'm not the type of friend that can constantly be texting you and updating you. Friends that don't need that and that are independent. I just find our friendship works really easily and everything goes pretty smoothly. And these are also like things that I was looking for in a boyfriend. People that are not only nice to me, but in public, they're nice to strangers. They're nice to people that even we don't like, like they're not just kind to me. I don't like when people show me favoritism just because I'm their friend. This is something that is kind of unique and that I've kind of had to like reel back on because I feel like I'm a little bit too honest sometimes. But when my friends are brutally honest with me, like when they can say, Sadie, wow, this is not working. Like the outfit's not working. You need to do this. Or when I ask them opinions on my videos or like a business idea or something like that, I want your honest opinion. Like, I don't want you to beat around the bush. Like tell me bluntly now, please, because I will do the same to you. And if I acted in a way that you didn't like, please just be so honest with me and let me know. I admire that about people. Not everyone is supposed to be super close friends. And I think that is a beautiful thing. Just know that friendships are supposed to be fun and are not supposed to be draining work. And if you feel like you haven't found healthy friends or you feel like you have to cut off a toxic friend now and you feel lonely, know that you will find your people. You will never stop finding more friends. And I would rather be by myself in good energy than around a ton of friends in bad energy. Oh my gosh, I've been talking for so long. That was like a lot. Like that was a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope I could just get brutally honest with you and talk about friendship. Let me know if there's another girly talk kind of topic you want me to do. Shop my digital planners on my Etsy shop, Actualizer Co. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye.